Hallelujah, hallelujah. Completely. <laughs> you laugh at me, girlfriend? Well, as you as you as typical Sunday, we have our church member, a member. Okay, not even a disciple, a member. She's sound asleep. Luna's sound asleep. Well, well, you know, most most members you know they at least go through the songs. And then they go to sleep. <laughs> then the nudging begins from the wife. But <laughs> let me put my guitar down. Wow. You want to say something? Wow, honey? wow. Just uh, welcome to you guys. Um, welcome to High Place Church today. This is Loving You to the, bro you to the Truth <laughs> broadcast. You too, and you know what? I'm just looking forward to this message. I'm looking forward to, be to being ministered <clears throat> to today. Uh, my faith has been uh, mm. challenged, and um, you know what? It's God who gives us faith anyway. Yeah, he does. You know, he gives us each a measure of faith, mm -hmm. but it's up to each one of us to cultivate that and to uh, make that stronger. So one of the ways that you're always going to do that, the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And Come that's on, what we're going to do today. We're going to hear the Word of God of God. So I'm yes. just thankful. Bless you guys. Thank you, my love. Okay. Now don't be like Luna and fall asleep. <laughs> my goodness, my goodness. Guys, we're in a season and a time that Paul wrote about in 2 Corinthians 11 that we're just hearing stuff, you know, I'm just, I'm going to talk to the body of Christ for a second, then I'm going to get into faith that I believe that is so, being so attacked in the body of Christ, yeah. all over the internet, the enemy is just ramping up his, his game, but see, he doesn't realize that God has chosen ones that are going to come against him on, in this earth. And I pray and I, and I believe God is going to use us. And, you know, we're just, we're just humble that God would use us at all. You know, but I'll tell you what, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a trying time for people. And, and we, we totally get it. But um, <clears throat> faith, let's talk about this for a second. Faith. Faith is one of those words that is, a, that is difficult to tie down to one single definition. According to a modern dictionary, faith is unquestioning belief that does not require proof or evidence. As it regards the faith found in the Bible, this is simple, not true. Faith is not opposite of fact or scientific knowledge. No. You know, we have, I know some atheists, and they challenge me on, on this question of faith, they go, of course you Christians believe, you know, that's what you, you stand on. Like, absolutely we stand on it. Because I think that that is the principal uh, word that we follow as believers. Are you okay? Honey? Just make sure to be in the middle. Get in the middle. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. There we go. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, faith is, um, again, when you come to Christ as a believer and you surrender your will and your life to God, okay, that takes faith. See, and, and, and a lot of folks just don't, they, they're losing it. Anyway, the evidence of faith may operate differently than those of science, but there they are, okay? You know what, I'll tell you, Veronica, what's crept in, when I, I rearranged my message a little bit, because I believe that the word doubt has crept in. Because we're doubting God's word. Mm -hmm. We're doubting the validity of the, validity of the Bible. We're doubting yeah. that God will do what he says he's going to do. Mm -hmm. We're doubting what we can't see. We're doubting all aspects of, of faith. And that's where the enemy is, is tricking everybody. I'm telling you, he's tripping you up. You know what? And and I'm telling you guys, you gotta you gotta pay attention, okay? That this thing that the devil is is coming against us is is that 
that measure of doubt and unbelief. Because to me, doubt is unbelief. So how can you be a Christian and have unbelief? How do you operate in two separate entities of Christianity? Either you believe or you don't believe. And if you believe, then you have faith to believe, right? Anyway, doubt. Bible scriptures about the importance of not giving in to doubt because nothing is too hard for God. Think about that. Amen. When doubt creeps in, you got to tell the devil, excuse me, <laughs> do you know who I serve? Do you know who dwells in me? Do you know the Holy Spirit that guides us into all truth dwells in me? And that no weapon that formed against me shall prosper or any tongue that rises up against me in judgment, it shall be condemned. I submit to God. I resist you, devil. You must flee. That's who's in me because greater is he that is in me than he who is of this world. Yeah. Come on, guys. This is, I'm telling you, I pray this encourages you. I pray this edifies your spirit. I pray that this lifts you up out of adultery. I pray that this lifts you up from your drug abuse, from your drunkenness, from your abuse of, of self-control in your life because you're so shattered by the things that we see. It's so easy to watch and see the news on CNN and we can see that's all that's happening in the world and we go, where's God? Where is you? Where are you with God? Where is your belief? Where is your faith? Yeah. Are you doubting God? Okay? Don't even entertain doubt. Because doubt will destroy your Christianity. That's right. Wow. <sighs> Jesus said that blessed are those that believe without seeing me. <laughs> So don't let doubt ruin your faith in God and Jesus Christ. I'm telling you this, if you get nothing out of this today, you got that. Think about that for a second. Because when you come against doubt, you say, hey man, no, 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 no. You don't understand the God of the universe, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if I be for you, then who? Who? Satan can be against you? If God be for me. In other words, these are scriptures that will strengthen your faith, that will strengthen your resistance to doubt because you're saying, uh-uh, excuse me, Satan. No, no, no. No, no. You, you can't have me. You can't have my wife. You can't have my children. You can't even have Luna. And no reaction. Anyway, <laughs> most pastors are looking for reaction, you know, and I don't need reaction. That's what I love about our church, Veronica. There is no reaction. Yeah. You don't have to respond. Okay, if I say something that's that you that's uncomfortable for you, get over it. Okay, it's okay. We know, you know, we, we're going to say things that are uncomfortable. You know, and, and the word of God is uncomfortable. Yeah. The truth is uncomfortable. Like, I love what, that, what Pastor Ty said. He said, the street preacher, he said, most people meet Christ at the way, but when they hit the truth, that's when it, it dismantles their faith. See, because you can't have faith without truth. Right? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody gets to the Father but through me. Jesus. Right? So, but... In order to get to, you first you're at the way, now you go into the truth, and all of a sudden, your whole life is exposed. Your sin is exposed. Your sexuality is exposed. Everything that, that, that you've been practicing as a, as a uh, practicing heathen, which is, you know, most of us, you know, that's what people do. They practice being unsaved. They're, un, they're, they're ungodly. Right. There, there's, no, there's no God in them. That, that's the whole point of faith. That's the whole thing of, of Christianity is to have this in you 
this word in you, abiding. He says, if you abide in my word and I abide in you, you are truly my disciples indeed. So we have to abide in God's word. Right? My goodness. Now, here's some scriptures I want to read. James 1.5 If any of you lack, lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally without reproach and it will be given to him. But let him ask in what? In faith. And you have to ask God in faith because you, you don't see God and if you're not in his word, you don't know God. So here you are, and you're, you're just a person reading the Bible. And there may be somebody out there who's never really entertained Christ into their life, who've re really never sat down with the Bible and said, you know what, I want to find out what these Christians are talking about, this God, this, this uh, Jesus. I want, to, I want to find out what he's about. And when you open up the Bible, that's when you're going to find out who he is. Because his word is above his name. His word is powerful, okay, and will change your life if you have faith to believe. With no doubting, no. for he who doubts is like a wave of sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Mark eleven twenty three. 23, truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that what he says will come to pass it will be done for him Jesus said Matthew 21 21 and Jesus answered and said to them truly I say to you if you have faith and do not doubt you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen. Matthew 14, 31, Jesus immediately reached out his hands and took hold of him, saying to him, oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? That's what Jesus is saying to us. Why do we doubt Christians? We doubt because we're going to a lot of churches who are just majoring on other things and they're minoring on other things. They're not majoring on your faith. They're not majoring on the truth. They're majoring on grace. And grace without truth is no grace at all. Right. I don't know, I mean, I pick up pastors all the time in my Lyft and Uber job, which I love. So I met this pastor this morning and he said, where's your church, brother? I go, in my car. He looked at me like perplexed. He didn't, he go, how, how do you have church in your car? I go, I won't drive for Uber and Lyft. And the, I have a captive audience who doesn't fall asleep like Luna. <laughs> and it's amazing the conversations I have with so-called believers so-called preachers, so-called pastors. You can call yourself whatever you want. And see, that's where we are in this world today is that we have so made God look like a fool because we've made occupations with most of these pastors. It's their job. Well, I have news for you. I believe a pastor should be paid and paid well but it's a call. It's a calling. It's, and who's calling you? In other words, did Angelo call Angelo to be a pastor? I certainly hope not. I, I question myself every day. Really? I mean, I, I'm not even worthy of that, of that title. To shepherd those, even though I believe that's what God has called Angelo and Veronica to do in this time and this season is to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ in love. We're loving you to the truth. Pray for me. That's what, what you're getting here. And I understand sometimes I get a little passionate 
And I think I get passionate because of the things I've experienced in the music industry. The music industry will, I, I love what this one preacher said on, on YouTube. He said, here's Christian music and here's the world. Here's secular music. A lot of people get into gospel music to launch their career to the secular music. Not to win them to Christ. Not to minister the gospel. Because if you, if they truly did that, a la Kirk Franklin's, a la Lauren Daigle's, how could they go on television and preach the gospel? Right? They'd be shut off. Chee! Next channel. Okay? But there's, there's, a, there's a price for being a true believer in Christ. You have to be willing to forsake all in order to follow him. You can't say, okay, I'm going to be in the industry and I'm, I'm going to minister and then minister to what? What are you going to minister to them? The, the preacher said, there's no word in their songs. Where's the word? And he mentioned specifically this Lauren Daigle song, which I want to talk about a little bit, about how it's about the world we're living in today. So the song is called You Say or something. And it's been number one on the charts for 62 weeks. Pretty impressive. But uh, where's the gospel in it? Because it's talking about people who are less than, and, and, and it's, there's no gospel in it. Go read the lyrics. I, I don't have them in front of me, unfortunately. But I want to get back on track here. Uh, faith. Because that's really ultimately what defines who we are. Who are you in Christ? Are you a faith believer or are you a, are you a doubter? Faith is the confidence we have in possessing the things we hope up for because of the promise of God. Yes. God promises us. Amen. Faithfulness is adhering, unswearing, unswingling to God and his covenant. To be faithful, we need to be loyal, steadfast, affectionate to God. Conscientious scruples in doing God's will, not our own will. Dedicate, zealous, devoted to God and truthful, true to God's word and standard of righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. There's a, there's a similarity between eyesight and faith. Simply in the effect that they have one is physical, your eyes are physical, right? And the other is spiritual. Nevertheless, in terms of 2 Corinthians 5, 7, faith and eyesight are opposites. Recall that Hebrews 11, 1 says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith cometh by hearing in Romans 10, 17. And Veronica, you, you've been freed from that from spirit of fear and timidity by, by confessing God's word and hearing his word. When you speak God's word, speak it out loud. As we speak it today, we're empowering our souls and our spirit Amen. against the enemy. You can't fight the enemy on your own. You can't fight Satan with your words. You can't fight Satan with your doubt. And unbelief. You can't. And I tell you, whether you're saved or not saved, Satan is still Satan. And he's going to rule and reign over you if you don't have the word of God in your mouth. That's it. Whether you're saved or not. That's it. Man says, seeing is believing. You ever hear that expression? Seeing is believing. That's what atheists say. Seeing. You know, you can't prove a negative. You know, you, you, what we're seeing is believing. It all comes down to they have doubt. Doubt has overtaken their life. That's what God showed me today. Wow. Doubt has, has crept in to these atheists, or they say they're atheists, okay? And doubt has come in. Doubt against God. Well, no, there is no God. No, no, no. You doubt that there is a God because... You're, that, that, that word doubt is in you. 
That seed of doubt is in you. Yeah. So you need to denounce doubt. You need to re, re, uh, uh, be delivered from doubt yeah. so that you can see with the eyes that God has showed you with. Amen. That's right. Eyesight means almost nothing in terms of spiritual. Faith is the foundation, the assurance, and the substance, the, the confidence of things not seen. This invisible realm of God, in terms of faith, what a person can see with his eyes is more likely to be frightened, to frighten him and create doubt. <laughs> Take that one. Listen to that. See with his eyes is more likely to be frightened. So what do we do as, as people? We go to the movie theater and we listen to Halloween movies. We watch Halloween movies with our eyes and we allow the eye gate to be frightened by what we see. Because I've spoken to my, a lot of atheists. I go, what if, what if you died and, and the werewolf came and got you? Or Frankenstein, I mean, really, and, and was attacking you. Would you be frightened? Oh, would you be brave? I doubt it. <laughs> See, more likely to be frightened him and create doubt than to build faith. See, there it is right there. Fear and, 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 and intimidation is the fuel for doubt. Yeah. Doubt. Yeah. That's what you're eating every day in this world. Oh, it's not going to happen. You know, it's, it, doesn't, it looks like a bad, it's, it's cloudy today. It doesn't look like a good day. I'm doubting it's going to be a nice day. I doubt the sun's going to come up. I doubt that it's going to, you know, wow, I doubt we're going to make it. How am I going to pay my bills today? I doubt I can make it. I doubt it. I doubt, I, I mean, I doubt, I doubt, I doubt, I doubt, I doubt, I doubt. Yeah. Wow. Faith, according to Ephesians 2 8, is a gift of God. It is a gift yeah. because we do not have real spiritual faith until God began to call us. It is a gift because by a mighty miracle, God opened up our minds to enable us to understand his word. Again, if you're not in the word, how are you going to understand his word? Understand his word so that we can process the evidence we hear from his word and make right choices choices relevant to his kingdom. And I've said this to you before, Veronica, I believe the evidence of a believer or a Christian, right, is the fruit that we bear. That's right. Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruits. So, what am I bearing in my life? Am I bearing, you know, adultery? Am I bearing doubt, fear, intimidation, sadness, uh, anxiety? Am I am I inviting all these negative things in my life when I have the cure for your life in the Word of God? That's what Jesus said. It's the cure for your life, the Word. Exactly. Belief. Oh my goodness. Second Corinthians 5, 7. For we know that when this tent we live in now is taken down when we die, right? And leave these bodies, we will have a wonderful new body in heaven. God, that's, you see, we need to gravitate to the promises of God. See, if we, if we meditate on his promises, if we meditate on the goodness of God, if we meditate on how much God truly loved you when he died on the cross for you, and the evidence was that he rose again from the dead, and he had over 500 witnesses of it. That's right. And of course, atheists will just prove, oh, that was his friends. No, excuse me. No. Mm -mm. Read your Bible. Believers and unbelievers. Correct. Saw him. Right. So. Resurrected. There is your, where is your measure of faith? That's what you have to ask yourself. Okay. Right. Okay, well, this, this Christianity thing, you know. Okay, well, 
I mean, I see people today dealing with, you know, drugs and alcohol to relieve their pain. They're doubting the medical community can't even give you a cure. I ride doctors around in my car all day and people with insurance companies. And I go, Do they, can they cure anybody? No. They can put a Band-Aid yeah. on your disease. Yeah. They can put a, you know, they can give you some drugs and hopefully, with luck, maybe it'll work. But I doubt it. I doubt it will work. Because I'm going to give you six months to live, and that's what you're going to meditate on, what a man spoke to you. Because he's seen experiences of the same condition. And because you're not in the Word of God, you have no defense of that statement that the doctor makes because you have decided to die. You've already said it. Say, because well, when the doctor says that you're going to die, well, by all means, he knows I don't. Well, who are you going to put your trust in, man? Right. You're going to put your trust in God or you're going to put your trust in men? Joshua said, who, who are you going to serve? You're going to serve the world or you're going to serve God? you got to make that choice and it's a good choice when you choose to remove doubt. See, I doubt that you have a cure for me, so I'm not even going to listen to your foolishness. I'm not going to listen to you tell me what you say I have, because all they can do, scientists and doctors, all they can do is maybe diagnose you. That's it. That's right. And then most people who don't have health insurance or who, have, who do have great health insurance. I had, a, I had a woman, she was in an accident. She had the best health insurance in the world and she still had to pay $100,000. I'm going to that and it blows my mind how we're so deceived and so tripped up you know, in, in this world, how you, they're looking for insurance rather than the, in, the assurance that God will provide. See, God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Jesus said, I, you know, I will supply all of your need according to my riches and glory in Christ Jesus. To his, to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Jesus will provide for you. But you know what? You don't have the faith. Mm -hmm. You have doubt. And, and, and I was, I, you know what? Like Paul said, such were some of you. Man, I I had a lot of doubt in my life. I had a lot of doubt that this this, this Christianity thing was real. I mean, we were we were involved in, in with all the imposters. I mean, that's the, the bottom line, and we had to repent for being with these people, so that we wouldn't be you know uh, held accountable for being stupid. Okay, and, and I just I have the message: stop the stupid. Well, Angelo, it starts with Angelo. Stop the stupid don't doubt never doubt god amen never yes his promises are yes and amen, amen. he doesn't go well maybe i'll heal him or gee maybe maybe i'll get up maybe I'll, I'll help him with his mortgage oh maybe there's no maybe with god it's yes and amen my my child you know what when you surrender your will unto God and allow God lean not to your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path mm -hmm. God will take care of you even if you don't see it don't listen to the bad news don't listen to the falsehood don't listen to those who are, who are, who are putting you down don't listen to the bully I mean you talk about bullies doctors are the biggest bullies of all you got cancer you're gonna have six months to live oh thank you appreciate that great news well, I have better news for you God said in, 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 in uh, I, Isaiah 50 my, my, my brain went some, somewhere else God will heal you go after God Trust him. And you know what? Even if you don't see it, there's things in my life I don't see. And I go, wow, where are you, God? And, and I mean, I remember this about a month ago. 
was struggling with, you know, Eric, well, it's been a, it's been a struggle in ministry, but our air conditioner went out. And that's that's five thousand dollars, man. Mm -hmm. Who has five grand to just chuck in some air conditioner? I certainly don't. Okay, and so doubt was creeping into me. I'm like, mm -hmm. and our fear was coming in, and yeah. oh my gosh, I mean, how am I going to pay my mortgage? How am I? And I just want to take care of the necessities. I mean, it's not even about the air conditioner at this point, let alone the, the house that looks like trash with no, no paint on the walls, the carpet's trash. I mean, the only one that enjoys it is Luna. Luna. She's in complete contentment to live here. <laughs> I love her because she's so content. She loves it. I mean, there's the, 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 the power of love right there. But anyway, I said, God, where are you, Lord? We went to the mailbox, my wife and I, and um, we got a check from, from, I don't know where it was from, but the reality was it met our need. It was, it was, Literally, it was ninety. It was not. It was eighty-eight degrees in my house, and had no money to take care of this. And the money came in for us Amen. from nowhere. Yeah, yeah. God said, "Excuse me, excuse me, Angelo. Do you not belong to me? Story. Am I not yours? Do I not take care of you? Amen. Have you Amen. have you forgotten the other times?" that you were in need and in want in your life. And where were you? You were wavering. You were doubting, Angelo. Like doubting, doubting Thomas. We must just put doubting Angelo right in there. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. My God. Here's another weapon of the enemy, anxiety. Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression. But a good word makes it glad. Second Timothy 1 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. These these scriptures, I wasn't even thinking of see when trouble comes, right? We're not thinking about the scriptures. We're thinking about the trouble. We're th see, because that's when the enemy comes in and goes, here's a Here's a dish full of doubt for you, Angelo. Mm. Here you go. Oh, oh, you're such the minister. Oh, you're a pastor. Oh, you sing gospel music. Here's your doubt. Enjoy it. That's right. Yeah. That's what will separate us from the Father. And you know what? Is if you're an atheist, that will separate you from the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. The knowledge of it. See, you're looking for knowledge. I know some people who say, well, 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 give me evidence. Well, our life, first of all, our life should be evidence to them. But they make every excuse to tell you that your life doesn't line up with God, your God, or whatever. And it's very sad because they just want to continue in their sin. Because their atheism enables them to do all the sin they want with no consequences. What an enjoyable life. But the sad reality is, is they're going to stand before the judge. Right. He said, you heard the gospel. In America especially, you heard the gospel and you turned away from it because you enjoyed your sin more than you did me. That's right. Faith. <sighs> By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Oh my God. God spoke it. It was. Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. 
Lean not to your own understanding, and in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. My goodness. Amen. It is so easy to face new failures and fears and to lose faith in God's plan for your life. We begin to question God. Is, is he real? And if he really cares about us? Let me encourage you today. I'm going to close with this. Let me, let me encourage you to know that our Father in heaven, our creator promised us that he would never leave us nor forsake us, even when it looks like our world is falling about all around us. It seems that God is nowhere to be found. But I can say one thing I know about God and that his promises are yes and amen. I say it again. He will never, he said, I will never leave you or fail you. My gosh. Let's end with these two scriptures. De Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong of good courage. Do not fear, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Meditate on that scripture. Amen. Strengthen yourself. Build up your spiritual muscles. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man <laughs> that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. He has said, and he will, he not do. And will he not do? Or has he spoken? And will he not make it good Amen. for you? God will make it good for you. You just got to push that plate of doubt away. And say, you know what? I'm not going to doubt Jesus Christ ever. I'm not going to doubt his word. I'm not going to, you know, Veronica, I'll never forget this. I grew up in a very uh, uh, household that was very, uh, what am I saying? I was Raymond. Everything I did, good or bad, sin or no sin, was lifted up. I mean, I mean, I, I could have killed somebody. Oh, he, he didn't really mean it. Really? I know. <laughs> you know I go, go into a grocery store, steal something, like I did in Puerto Rico, I had that little drink. And, and then it's like, but it's like, it's amazing to me. And of all the things, what do they call it? Affirmation. I was continually affirmed. Affirm, 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 affirm. Please, give me, give me, give me. Oh, tell me how wonderful I am. Tell me how great I sing. Tell me how great I speak. Great me. My mother, I mean, I adore my mother and my father. They were, they were a blessing to me. But the greatest compliment my mother ever gave me in my entire life, and I'll never forget it. She said, you and your wife, Angelo, truly live by faith. Wow. And I, I'm like, wow, she saw that. I mean, my mother saw that on me. She saw that on Veronica. She saw it on our family. And, 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 and I really believe that that stuck with her, that she had no fear of her family because she knew that our faith was going to win. Doubt was going to go. Faith was going to win. Faith is going to win. Faith is going to strengthen you for the rest of your life here on earth. And you just got to keep resisting the devil and he will flee. Keep resisting him. Keep your doubt over there. I'm after faith. I believe the word of God. If today, speak that out loud over yourself. Confess it over yourself. Speak it. Say, I stand with Jesus Christ. I believe every precept. I believe every word in, in the Bible that his word is, is, a, is a testimony for me to live my life according to his will, not mine. And that God will provide. God will take care of you. No matter what this world does, no matter what your politics say and do, no matter what your CNN says, 
Right, amen. God don't need any of that. I promise you, he loves you deeply. He died for you, and he wants you as his own. Don't let doubt creep in. Just believe in the name of Jesus Christ. I love you. I encourage you in the name of the Lord here at High Place Church. God bless you.